vocabulary in come on move over vocabulary in unit 16 um, the verb bino the verb to go which I mentioned in the video actually about the forms of gignosco it's the principal parts are bino besamai ebain bebeka so there's no passive of the verb to go in English or any other language that has a verb like this but the and there's nothing funny about or peculiar about the forms except for the heiress which is exactly like egnon um, so it's a thematic a thematic rather heiress it's ebain ebes ebe ebe men ebeta ebe son like egno 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 it's easier if you want <laughs> okay you just have the stem and the endings um, but it means to go or to step or to walk and it says in the perfect that it means stand okay uh, it means to be present because you've finished the act of coming you you're you you, you can just mean to be there okay um, but it also is correct that it means stand so that's it's the same semantics there's also they give you the compound form with this there are many compounds of the verb bino um, and they give you the compound anabino, which means to step up or to go up onto something or to board a ship. Um, katabino means to get off of a ship, mm -hmm. right. like uh, embark. Yeah. Um, mount and dismount. Mount and dismount, one of those things. Okay, um, the next word is gignosco, which we've already talked about, which the principal parts of it are given and... Um, and which means to recognize to know with cognate with the English verb no. Um, get a pronoun he castos, he caste, he caston, which is a word for the equivalent of the English word each. Um, and it does some weird thing in the in the vocabulary saying each of many, you know, the plural, each of several groups, all considered singly. Um, but I think each works fine as a meaning in all places that you encounter it in Greek. That's overcomplicating something. Next word is the preposition henica. We, this is a, a preposition of a kind that we, I think we had one example before. It's not really a preposition, it's a postposition. Mm. Okay, because the object of it precedes it. And it takes an object in the genitive case, means because of, so you put you put the thing that you, you're giving as the cause in the genitive case before Hanukkah. So, uh, um, if you want to say because, oops, you can also mean that. So, Belisi has written an example of the use of Hanukkah, D case Hanukkah, which would mean because of justice or for the sake of justice. Hanukkah can mean, can mean for the sake of as well as because of. The book translates it for the sake of. Um, both of those meanings work. Next is finally the name of the chief god of the Greek pantheon, Zeus. Um, and notice that it, the genitive of Zeus, okay, is dios, which looks like a totally different root. But the zeta of Zeus comes from dy, okay. Again, when there's no, uh, when there's no, um, when there's an s ending. The dy turns into a, a zeta, otherwise it becomes a di. So that's why I have this very funny inflection. So it's deus, dios, the genitive is di, um, the accusative is di, ah, okay, um, and the vocative is zo, <laughs> mm. okay. Um, so um, the next word is theatron, which is the word for theater. It's a neuter noun of the second declension, like ergon, theatron, theatrutraton. The next verb is lego, which has a very messy situation with principal parts. So lego is the standard verb for say, and, and it's, it's a more marked word than feme, okay? So it means to say something um, in a, in a um, usually in a more significant way. But if you if you notice, there are alternative forms for all the principal parts because what's happened is that a couple of words have collapsed into the form of Lego as the normative verb to say. So the root er, um, which you see in ereka and eremai, um, is a part of the principal part system of Lego. So is the root wep, which you have in the word wepos or epos, which gives you epic. Um, 
uh, so you've got a pawn. There are a couple of different things as well as Lego. So you see uh, Eris passive form Alekthane as well as Rethane. The book lays out all these all these combinations for you. Uh, there are no differences in meaning. It's just a matter of various forms that can be used in a complex uh, situation uh, in which a bunch of words are being synthesized into one. Um, the next word is the word for harbor, limen, limenos, a nice uh, third dimension noun, nothing in particular is a problem for it, about it. The next word is me pote, which goes with upote, a little bit farther down. These are the words of for never, and the only difference is the way in which you use u and me are conditioned two forms of the word for never, because some in some cases you need to use me in Greek. Um, there's the word nous, whose inflection we've talked about, means the ship. There's the particle ne with an eda, okay? Um, there's another form of it, which is ni as well, nu alpha iota. So it has the same function, which you say by the, by, when you're swearing in the name of somebody, you say ne ton dia. It takes an accusative um, with it. Um, so uh, it's they give you the example of of a uh, by plus name of a god in the accusative. There's one place where Plato does um, by Thoth, who's a god among the Egyptians. <laughs> okay, or there are other because Socrates doesn't swear by gods. But anyhow, um, it's okay to swear by other people's gods, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> they don't count. <laughs> they don't count. All right, maybe it says Thoth. Or, no, it's another Egyptian god. It's not Thoth. But uh, anyway, my memory is playing tricks on me. So there's also nomizo, the verb to think, which is related to the word damas, the word for custom. How you get from custom to think is not easy. Okay, But um, in any case, this is an idzo verb. Nomizo has a contract future nomio. Um, notice there's a circumflex in the form of the future. It means it's an epsilon contract verb. Nanamisa, nanamika, nanamismai, nanamisthain. So consider, think, or believe. It's also, before it's a verb that means think, it's a verb that means to reckon. Um, so it, you're getting out of the picture, Belize. Uh, um, it means to count up a bunch of numbers. Okay? So it's really that that you need to explain is how you get from the word for, from custom to the word to a word that means to calculate numbers. It's an interesting problem. All right. Mm -hmm. The next word is hati, okay, which should be paired with the last word in the vocabulary list here, hos. It's giving you them in the vocabulary because it's taught you that you can use uh, either one of these conjunctions to mean that in English to introduce an embedded sentence. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, next word is the adverb panu, which comes from the word pas, the word pas pasapan that means all. So it's like the English word totally um, means has the same kind of currency. Use it all over the place in Greek. Um, and now we have the verb bipto. Notice it has a long I. Okay. Bipto, which means to fall. Um, and its principal parts are worth looking at because they're not predictable. It's the the root here is Pipto is actually a duplicated form from p pto, okay, where your the actual stem is p e t. So you've got some forms with a with with a sigma where you don't expect it, and that's what's happened to the tau in the root. So pipto, the future is pesumai. Notice a middle future, a few of those. Epeson is the second aorist. Pe ptoka, you got again the p t with the o. On the other side of it, instead of in the, between the p and the t, and, um, and they also teach you the compound verb ek pipto, which is an active verb with a passive meaning, it means to be exiled, mm -hmm. to fall out of, means to be driven out of a city state, a Greek city state. Um, next word is politeia, uh, politeias, an abstract noun of the type aletheia, aletheias, um, and it means a, the constitution of a Greek city-state. So there's a famous work called the Athenaion Politeia, the constitution of the Athenians, described by Aristotle. Um, there, 
it also means government in general, stuff like that. Now we get the adjective polus, pole, polu, whose forms we've discussed. That means much in the singular and many in the plural. And there's an adverb derived from it. It's an akis adverb, okay, which is alpha, the suffix alpha, kappa, iota, sigma, with an accent on the alpha, is equivalent to the multiplication sign. So it means many times, polakis, or often. Okay. Um, next word is the adjective paneras, panera, paneran, which it tells you means worthless, evil, or base. It's a word like kakos. It means bad, okay? Um, so it means bad in the sense of wicked. It's usually of moral behavior. You're missing some accents up there, right? Panera, paneran, okay. And in modern Greek, it means naughty. Uh, right now we get the prefix, in other words, the preverb pra, okay, which uh, unlike preverbs like apa and peri, uh, well, that's not a good example, unlike preverbs like apa and epi, okay, the omicron in pra as a preverb never disappears. So even if the verb begins with a vowel, it stays. Um, and they teach you one compound with pra, prodidome, which means to give something up to an enemy, to abandon somebody or uh, someone or to betray someone, prodidome. Um, coming to the end here, we get the abstract noun sophra sune. We have the adjective sophron, which I think means prudent, sophron, sophronos. So this is a, a sune noun, sophra sune means prudence, okay? I think self-control and moderation are not really what it's about. It means knowing, being smart about what to do in a given situation, being cautious and prudent. Next to last word is fe me, fe so, fe so, the verb to say or assert, and then we've already talked about hosts.